So I finally tried Svelte, right? Well, I love it. Let me tell you why. So first off, if you're new to the channel, my name is James Q. Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. I also recently started a podcast called Compressed FM. So if you want another place to listen and learn from me about web development, design, tools, that kind of stuff, you can check that out as well. But in today's video, I'm going to talk about Svelte. So I have been using Svelte uh, on an internal project at work at Auth0 uh, a couple times over the last several months. And my problem was I would kind of dive into the source code, try to solve some problem, but not really understand how Svelte worked or how it works. And I realized I, I should actually spend some time like learning Svelte before I just go in and write code. Even though I could write code, I just was stumbling around and I didn't understand syntax and that kind of stuff. So I finally sat down, I watched a couple of uh, videos on YouTube, one from Travis Media, one from Gary Simon from Design Course on uh, Svelte Crash Courses, and really quickly Svelte clicked. And it's really, really nice. So I'm going to tell you, I think it's five or six things that I really like about it, especially given my experience with React. So I'll make a few comparisons to React. If you don't have experience with React and you've got a different framework, that's okay too. I'll just explain to you why I like Svelte and why I'm probably going to be using it a lot more. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so the first thing is the speed of Svelte when it gets done. Now, I want to start by saying, like, a lot of people really rave about speed in applications. Rarely do these things actually become perceivable to the human eye. But this is something that's actually really, really interesting with Svelte because it does it differently than a few of the other frameworks. It doesn't have the concept of a virtual DOM that React has, for example. Uh, I'll link to this page in here. But basically, Svelte compiles down to vanilla JavaScript. So when you ship your Svelte application, you're not shipping any like actual dependencies. You're just shipping the outputted code. Now, this is different than something like React. When you ship a React app, it's going to include React and its dependencies. Uh, so in this case, Svelte is just going to be kind of clean, uh, regular vanilla JavaScript and CSS uh, that it just sends down. So in theory, that should make it faster. Now, I haven't done any like benchmarks or anything. Uh, but that's kind of that's kind of what the whole thing is. I think one of the big reasons that people initially got interested is because felt kind of promised to be faster, not working with the virtual DOM, working directly with the actual real DOM. So the next thing that I really like is that your CSS is kind of scoped by default. So in a different framework, you would have to kind of set up something specific, or I guess maybe we should talk about um, React specifically. So CSS in React is not uh, is not scoped to a certain component by default, but it kind of is that way with Svelte. So let's take a look at, I've got this to-do app. To-dos are the best way to learn a new framework. Like no matter what people say, it just hands down is because it shows you a lot of the different concepts that we'll talk about. But if I look at the source code for this, inside of uh, the main application, I've got this uh, this header, I've got the to-do form, the to-do list, and then I've got all of that wrapped in a class of container. Now this class is just, uh, dot container. It's a class of container. But if we go and look at the source code in here, you'll see if I select this, it's actually container and then it's got some sort of like Svelte tag on the end. So basically what Svelte will do is it will scope these things and apply that tag to the end of your classes that you create and then target those classes uh, by be it being a combination of, in my case, container and then that like auto generated thing from Svelte. So this means that my styling is not going to compete with other components. So I could have two different container classes and two different components, and they won't compete with each other. So that like separation of concerns being uh, available to you out of the box is actually really nice for me. So I like that you also have the ability to do global CSS if you need it. So don't think that you don't have that option, uh, but it is just kind of built in here by default. All right. Now the thing, this is probably the thing that I'm most excited about is the bind syntax in Svelte. Now, if you were to work in a React application and you did a form like this, uh, you would have to, uh, if you're using hooks in React, you'd have to create a piece of state using the use state hook in React. You would have to handle the like on input change for the input box. Every time that input changes, you would have to update the piece of information in state. So if we uh, kept a piece of state for this thing, for this input called to do, every time the to do input changed, or the input box change, you'd have to go and manually update the actual input value yourself. That's your responsibility. Svelte does that, uh, not just like by default, but super, super easy. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Inside of the script tag for uh, this to do form, and this is kind of the layout for 
Svelte components is you have your script tag with any JavaScript. You then got your regular markup that you would use. And then going back to what we just so showed, you would have your style, uh, style tags here. So um, with this form, we've got, uh, I've got a, a variable called uh, to do, and this is going to hold the input from the user. And the way we like bind that is using the bind keyword and then colon, and then we're going to bind the value of to do to the value property of the input. So let's actually show what this looks like. If I were to add in a property or a display of to do, uh, so we use the single brackets in here to do variable interpolation and uh, put that out to the screen. This does two way binding in the sense that like if I start changing in here, notice that it's updating this real time as well. Now, again, coming from react, there's a couple of different steps you have to do for that. It doesn't just happen this easily. And it's one of the kind of annoying things in react is doing form. So this just having this bind syntax, being able to use that is actually really, really nice. Now, the next thing I think is really cool are the stores in Svelte. So if you go back to a react context, uh, actually pun intended, because that's actually where I mean to go. If you're in react and you want to share a piece of state between different components, you usually jump for something like Redux or the context API. And to set up the context API, you have to create a, a provider, you have to create a context, you have to share that context, then you have to import that context to be able to use it with a use context hook. Honestly, that's a little bit too much to set up. It's a, it's kind of a lot to understand. Um, I remember when I first learned it, I was kind of going through a couple of different tutorials to figure out how to set it up. And every time, even now, I feel like I have to look up how to set that up. So. Um, what if we want to share the list of to-do items? So from the to-do form, we want to add an item to the list. And then in our to-do list, we want to grab those to-dos and then display them. Well, we can use a store for this. And this is basically our ability to share state between different components. So what we do is inside of a JS file, so to-do store JS, we uh, in, import the writable thingy from Svelte. We initialize that with an empty array, and then we just export that variable. Now, what this means is we've got uh, a variable called to do's, which starts off as an empty array that we can either read or update from any component that we want. So the way this works is inside of our to do form, we can import to do's from the to do store and then inside of our function handler. So on click, we call create to do. We then call to do's dot update. So what this does is update takes a callback function that gives you the previous state. You probably have seen something like this before in react. It gives you the previous state and then you return what the new state should be. So in this case, when we add it to do, we'll add on the new to do and then we'll spread out the existing to do. So we're basically just adding one more to do to the list. So let's go and look at this and we'll say uh, record video do's felt stuff etc etc so this is taking that svelte store and it's adding stuff to it now the other part of this is how do we then uh, get these updates how do we subscribe to that store to know as the data changes well this is really nice as well so inside of our to-do list we now have this uh, kind of fancy dollar sign syntax and if you use the dollar sign with a writable or a readable what that inherently does behind the scenes is it does a subscribe to that data. So anytime that data changes, it's going to update here, which is then going to trigger a re-render of our uh, list of to-dos in this case. So just based on this dollar sign, really short syntax, I'm now up to date constantly with whatever data is coming from the store because it's a writable. So we write stuff or we update the store, we update the to-do store from our form and then in our list, we just kind of see those changes take place and then they get displayed on the screen like this. It's really, really nice. The ability to separate out some logic into a store that has a, a nice concise API to update and then to like subscribe to the information that's in there. Really nice and much simpler to me than it would be in React and I don't have as much experience in Vue, uh, but it's maybe something similar to uh, what you'd use in Angular with services but I feel like this is even more concise than it would be in Angular. So anyway, I think that is really, really cool. Creating this to-do list, uh, again, covers like a couple of those core concepts of Svelte, and I think just shows that it does it really well. So the last thing that I'm really excited about is Svelte Kit. Now this is kind of gonna kind of be like, I think what Next.js is for React, and people know me, know that I'm a Next.js fan. This is gonna kind of be the equivalent for Svelte. 
And uh, this means that you get the ability to do like single page applications. You can do uh, server side rendered apps. You can have SEO uh, and progressive enhancement stuff. And it's built really fast. Like the actual development is super fast uh, because I think they're using Vite or Vite in this. So it's a lot faster than using Rollup, which is what I had in the code that you just saw. So stuff is super fast. It's gonna, in theory, kind of uh, not replace something like Next.js, but give you the same capabilities, which is really, really cool. Now, the one caveat to this, this is in a public beta, so you can go and check it out. They've got this marked at the beginning of their documentation on GitHub. This is in beta. Uh, you can track progress towards 1.0 with like the issues that they're working on and stuff. I don't know when that's gonna come out, but it is something that I am personally really looking forward to. All right, so hopefully you got a little bit of insight into why I like Svelte. You can expect more Svelte videos. I'm planning on doing a build a Pokedex with Svelte with the Pokemon API. Let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in that and what other things you might want to see with Svelte or if you have another framework you'd like to see me try out. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna do like a community shout out in every video that I do to kind of show love for some of the other content creators that are out there. So I wanna share the Better Dev YouTube channel. This is by two very good friends of mine, Chris and Kapehe or Cap. Uh, they are awesome. They do really cool tutorials on here and they do live streams. So check out the Better Dev YouTube channel as the community shout out for today. Thanks as always for checking out this video. I appreciate it and I'll catch you next time.